What is up guys, Politics Gaming here, and today we are doing a brand new episode of the United Mexican States. Essentially, in the last episode, we did do a large increase in some oil production and as well as some energy production as well. Um, we do have some more oil production coming in and we do um, have some more, about four more um, commissioned as of right now. We are going to be searching a little bit more um, before this uh, next coming election. This episode will be focusing on the Mexican election of 2024. We are about 92 days away from the election and the campaign starts on day 65. We will spend that time fundraising as well as doing a lot of work uh, behind the scenes trying to get everything going. We are not eligible to run uh, uh, AMLO in this next election. However, we do already have a new candidate who is on the ballot and she will be uh, Claudia Scheinbaum. This is the real life uh, candidate um, in Mexico and she actually in next year's election will be facing off against um, the uh, National Action Party's uh, Xochitl Galvez. And uh, right now Xochitl has about a 34% approval rating while let's look uh marina she has a 80 percent approval rating so that is really really good that uh miss got miss uh shine bomb uh is doing so well in terms of um in terms of uh, approval rating so that means that we do have a very good chance of winning this election um i'm actually going to go ahead and hold a poll right now um i don't know i think actually it's not gonna allow me to do this yeah so so because we are in the same year of an election period um it does not allow you to do any sort of poll conductions um mainly because i i think this is more like oh hey like if uh you would vote for today even though i think i think they should kind of like bring that option back because um, it kind of doesn't make any sense that way you can try to like kind of form your campaign or make your decisions beforehand. I think that's the reason why they don't have it in there is mainly because you are unable to kind of like affect the results of the election. Essentially what we are going to do, we're going to go over to currency real quick. Inflation is on its way down. We are just under 3% now. Um, our growth rate right now is about 3.72%. So we are pretty much good in terms of of our economic situation we are still hard at work trying to fight illegal employment right now we are at about down from 53 percent we have reduced it by about 20 points so this is a record um reduction in illegal employment right now mexico is notorious for having such a essentially illegal economy and so we are very much trying to formalize our economy and in turn we are getting our much needed employee social security payments we could actually be doing a lot more maybe we maybe since we are now um, getting these maybe we can actually increase it however that could actually lead to a increase in Ill illegal employment let's actually go over here company tax 30 percent we could actually make it a little bit easier for uh, companies to essentially hold on to their employees the reason that they go informal is mainly because of, of of the constraints of having a business so that means employee social security payments um taxes company taxes and it basically says okay i can't afford you but i really need you so go ahead and i will just kind of pay you under the table and we're not going to take we're not going to deal with taxes so essentially also let's go over here we did pass a major immigration agreement in the last episode so we go over here our uh, number of illegal immigrants is actually on its way kind of down right now so it actually was on its way up sharply going up and this is um mainly like you know they're not gonna stay here so most of like what we're kind of dealing with um these are people that are coming through mexico and using us as a transit hub in order to get to the United States. So what we need to be doing is that we need to be working with the United States as we are already, and we need to kind of like get some sort of uh, uh, legs going on the ground um, in order to get these numbers going down. And it looks like that in a way, 
our uh, situation kind of maybe the immigration policy or the integration policy. Um, we need to kind of like get this immigration rate. We need to get it positive. So it actually was on its way up and seems to have tanked down about last, um, looks like October. Last October, there was a big sharp decrease right there. And we see a little bit of an increase and then now there's a sharp decrease as of right now. So it's kind of uh, interesting to see what, what's going on. We also do see that number of immigrants in the country percentage of population is 1%. I don't know if this is also including um, illegal immigrants right now. So we do see that annual flow of incoming migrants is 54,000 up from 50,000 and from annual flow of outgoing migration or migrants uh, is up to 164,000 um, which is uh, up from uh, 149,000. So this is a pretty um, significant, I mean, we're, we're, we're getting some more people, but we need to kind of start to either increase our annual flow or we need to start uh, getting reductions in uh, people that are leaving right now. So 3.2%, 6.6%. So immigration, people are going um, to other countries, students or economic or humanitarian family reasons. Um, we also need to, we are reducing illegal immigration right now. Um, we're actually down from 1.5 million people entering. Uh, They're actually uh, 1.2 million now. And then so um, people that are leaving the country, um, this is actually kind of a good thing. Uh, 2022, we had 2.6 million people leave the country. And then now we're at 1.29 million people right now. Um, illegal immigrants right now, most of them are from Venezuela and Guatemala. Um, I think I tried to sign an agreement with Guatemala and they basically said no. Um, so we are actually building a wall right now with Guatemala. And hopefully this kind of does put a dent on how many people are coming in. Um, I also have one last option that I have yet to use. I kind of want to hit 500,000 before I do this. Um, we are going to do a regularization operation, except I'm most likely not going to be able to do it until after this election, because I basically kind of wait until I have a sizable amount of people that I can regularize and then make into citizens, in which they are actually not citizens, but they're essentially kind of like protected from deportation and they kind of help out in the economy because they have already been working in Mexico for a set amount of time. So before this election, I am going to go ahead and come over to farming. Um, we are going to see how much I can spend. 1.583. Um, we have like 20 about 30 billion dollars that we can kind of spend right now let's do a 200 million dollar subsidy on the entire agricultural sector actually let's do 500 million um as the united states usually okay actually let's do 250 million Cool, that actually works. And people really, really like that. So let's go ahead and go to the election period of 65 days before the election. And then we will go ahead and start to uh, a campaign and get things going for the election. All right, and um, we're on day 72. So we have about five, about a week until this election comes in. So we have a meeting request from President Biden of the United States. Let's go ahead or bait in. Um, let's go ahead and accept that meeting request. We're going to go over here to services and we're going to go over to hotel tourism and trade. We're going to do a $500 million grant subsidy to the tourism industry. Um, and then $295 million. We're going to exonerate it because we are on, we are not making that much money off of profits right now. The productivity index is at a whopping 6%. That is very, very bad. Um, and it employs 2 million people. So let's go ahead and uh, do a, a subsidy to uh, tourism. Let's actually go ahead and increase that. So we're going to go ahead and do a billion dollars. It will be a massive amount of money that we are giving the tourism industry in order to jumpstart it as of right now. We really need to start relying on some sort of economic sectors in, in order to 
uh, get things going for our economy. Uh, urban transportation, we will go ahead and do a massive subsidy of $500 million to urban transportation. And not only will we exonerate and subsidize it, we will go ahead and do a nationalization of urban transportation. Now, the question is, should we nationalize it by 100% or should we do a state involvement in the minority shareholders? They can have different reasons for nationalizing, acquiring a strategic sector, securing jobs, reaping the benefits of the sector, but all of it at the expense of a certain loss of profitability. The state acquires the shares of nationalized companies by taking them over several years. On the other hand, when privatizing the sale of the, the state of the, the sale of the state's shares to private investors generates immediately an immediate revenue windfall. That's a typo. Um, if the state is the majority shareholder, the sector's deficit or profit is included in the government revenues. So because it's urban transportation, it's just kind of like, hey, like um, we're not going to have like complete state control over this. We're going to go ahead and do a state involvement in the public transportation sector. This essentially means it's kind of like if you're familiar with the public option system, this essentially means that we are saying that the government will start its own business and have like a, a, a share in the market, but it's essentially like like you have other options that you can do. So if you don't like the government service, then you can go over and say, okay, well, we're gonna do, um, you know, if we don't like uh, company A, we're gonna go to the government sector, or if they don't like the government sector, then they can go to company A. So this is essentially a pretty interesting thing. I always like to nationalize urban transportation because it's kind of like, it's uh, the other thing about nationalizations is that it's basically like you're guaranteeing that service for the country. Um, so it's basically like, just like it says, it's a strategic sector, um, meaning things like oil or something like that. But strategic is usually at the whim of whoever's defining it. So whatever you think would be strategic, if you think that the aluminum sector is a strategic sector, go ahead and nationalize it. But the only thing is about nationalizations that you should know is that when you nationalize, you need to understand that nationalizations will kill some of the profits. So you need to make sure you have a plan, an exit strategy in order to uh, na uh, privatize it. So I'm going to nationalize the urban transportation sector, but I do have a plan to, to privatize it again within five years. And essentially this will allow me to build up the sector with government money. And then afterward, I can say, okay, we're done with it. We're gonna go ahead and hand it back to the private sector. And then you get that revenue windfall by selling those shares whenever the sales of that sector go to $5 billion, $10 billion, and you get a couple of billion dollars that you probably didn't expect that you, that you would probably have. And then you can use that money to spend on other services. So before this election period, yeah, we already uh, national or uh, uh, sent it some subsidies, five hundred million dollars. Uh, we go over to 70, 70 days. And um, any last words, anything uh, to hold your peace? Um, we do have some debt that we can pay off right now. We have twenty nine billion dollars. Let's go ahead and pay. Mexico right now. So we owe the United States the most amount of money, but Mexico, we owe more interest right now. So let's go ahead and pay ourselves. Um, that way we're not paying too much in interest right now. And that way we don't have to really worry about ourselves. Um, and last but not least, before this election period, I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of highways. So what we have right now is that we do have a Mexico City to Puebla, all the way over to Teoacan, and then from Mexico City goes over to uh, to Queretaro, and then to Leon. Leon, we can go to. I'm not even gonna try to say that name, but we're gonna go over to San Luis Potosi. Let's go ahead and do that. It's Five hundred million dollars, and um, we're gonna do Leon all over to Guadalajara. Guadalajara could actually connect us to Guadalajara to Tepic. We're Guadalajara to Colima. We're going to do Guadalajara to Colima. So we're going to go 
through the mountain. And it's kind of like next to the mountain. The goal here is for a nationwide highway system that interconnects the entire country. Colima will then connect over to, and we're doing this mainly because we have the money, kind of like the spending money, where it's a little bit of debt spending essentially, but it's a very vital thing that we need, that we are not able to kind of like do yet. Um, this will be the most expensive one and we're gonna stop right here. $2 billion annually, about $10 billion uh, over 10 years, over five years, and it'll take about eight months to build. Um, we will go ahead and confirm that right now. And so that is uh, confirmed. Thank you so much. That is the highway system of Mexico as of right now. So we do um, almost have a full circle. So we can go to Acapulco, all the way to Teotihuacan. Teotihuacan can go over to Oaxaca. And Oaxaca can lead us down into the southern uh, and gulf parts of Mexico. And then possibly we will do like Tux, 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 Tuxla. Yeah, man, I'm skewering these names. I'm trying to learn some Spanish, so don't, so bear with me, Mexican viewers and Spanish viewers. Um, don't make fun of me, please. Um, yeah. Um, I think this is going to be to work out very well. Um, other things that we can do, we can try to build a road, a highway um, from one of these southern cities all the way over to Guatemala City. So this will be really good. Um, uh, and aside from that, let's go ahead and get to this election period. All right, and we are back. So um, we do have a meeting with the president of the United States. Let's go ahead and see what he wants to do. He wants to purchase some Mexican oranges. We do not have the production right now um, to cover our consumption and export these to the United States as they are asking for about a million tons of these. Um, they want to offer us $744 per ton up from 661. Not too special. We could actually probably try to wiggle up a little bit to $1,300. Um, and then um, we're gonna do like a three year contract. See if they can accept that and they actually do. So this is a three year contract that will expire in 2027. Um, we'll actually see, try to see whether that was a good contract or not. Um, we're gonna negotiate an immigration agreement or propose, propose an immigration agreement. So this is actually something I wanna look at real quick. So to come and work in Mexico, um, specific reinforcement, limit the flow of illegal immigrants coming from the United States. And then so facilitation of the return of illegal immigrants to their country of origin. Facilitate the return of illegal US immigrants or this is the one. Receive and detain specifically immigrants in transit in the United States territory while waiting for a response for asylum, which I always get confused between immigratory and then immigratory. So I think we already did one with immigra immigratory. Um, receive and detain specifically in the Mexican territory while waiting for a response for asylum. Let's go ahead and try to do that. And then let's kind of like try to push them up to about $300 billion. Try to renegotiate that because I really hope that it doesn't cancel itself. I haven't tried to do this yet, but we are in the presidential election. Now presidential election started the election campaign. The election is approach and will take us will take place. As you know, in a single round, the election campaign has officially begun. All candidates are now known, you know, uh, you know, this time we'll follow the debates as a simple specter. The ideal situation, pity the heralds the end, meaning that he is pitying that this is my last turn as I am constitutionally unable to run for a second term. So let's go ahead and go over to elections and let's see who the candidates are. So we do see that there are no default candidates right now. So my plan for this worked. Claudia Scheinbaum is our uh, lovely new uh, a candidate for the Marina Party, and she will be leading us to victory in the 2024 elections. These elections will take place on the 7th of July. So we have about less than two months um, to uh, win this election. First things first, let's go ahead and commit some election fraud. Just kidding. Let's 
go ahead and go over to political parties, go over to coalition. And this is a political coalition that we have right now of the Marina uh, with PVEM and then PCM. So this is the communists and the greens that are a part of our coalition. Forming a political coalition has two distinct goals to increase the chances of winning in presidential election with one candidate or multiple parties, or to gain a majority in the national parliament to be able to lead the country with, with le a legislative body in line with the government. To make up the coalition is complex. Parties cannot be too far apart politically, and they must agree on a common political program and on the allocation of ministerial posts in the event one forms. Note that a coalition disbands after losing an election. So this will be a um, something that we'll look at. Let's go ahead and hold a fundraiser for our party. And another thing that we are going to do, since we finally did uh, change those pesky little campaign finance laws, we have f we have the ability to now ask our billionaires for some money so this will be something that we immediately need to do so then we see call for new elections from the coalition the coalition been working up well up and well goes out saying we only back you again if a new common political program is established and meets our expectations the ex the same applies to promises and ministerial posts we will rape your proposals and this is from all of them the pce pcm and the green party is that they are essentially waiting for me to say Okay, this is what our plan is uh, right now. So let's go ahead and do promise of a ministerial post. We're going to go ahead and promise uh, justice. Now we're going to pump. We're going to promise education to the PVEM to the Greens, and then we're going to do imagine homeland security to the communists. We're going to do education to the communists. Press coalition approval. Ministerial posts. PCM. We're going to give them two ministerial posts and we're going to do a common program. We're going to call for the increase of a minimum wage. Um, let's go over here. Work and minimum wage. Let's go ahead and promise $175. Why do they not like that? Yeah, of course. Um, let's go ahead and promise. <laughs> we already got. We're already off to a good start, aren't we? Um, education, salaries. Let's go ahead and call for 1.5 million teachers. All right. So we were kind of like not doing as well as I thought. I, as I as I uh, kind of thought, um, so let's go ahead and propose something else, a little left wing, that we're pretty sure that they would actually like to support. So right now we have a 4.05% wealth tax. I can actually bump that up to about 6% for them, and I'm pretty sure they will support that. So let's go ahead and propose that wealth tax right now. Oh yeah, they definitely support that. And we're gonna do a max of four because we have uh, five different promises, actually 15 different promises. So we could do like a max of five, um, but I wanna kinda like shoot for about four of these right now. Um, let's go ahead and do transportation. So it's because we did that uh, whole thing on transportation, let's go ahead and say that road maintenance uh, is going to, you know what, actually, um, let's do doubling of our medical staff. Medical staff. Yeah, doesn't really incite that much excitement, but we are good on kind of like a, a observing against this right here. Let's go ahead and request coalition approval right here and see whether this goes through. And right now, uh, the uh, Marina Party has agreed to the coalition as well as the Ecologist Green Party of Mexico. However, the communists do not seem to be keen on joining our coalition. So we, there's a possibility we may try to say, you know, okay, we're gonna kind of like uh, keep you out of it. Um, I don't know if there's a possibility since, you know, the. The ecologists kind of said, yeah, we're going to go ahead and join you. But the communists are like, hey, let's uh, 
uh, can maybe we can try to push them out or something like that. Decided not to approve your coalition proposal, however, it doesn't. You see that there are many points we can relate to. If you could further develop certain points or demonstrate some imagination, we could be able to reach an agreement. So let's go over here, political parties, and could we could we propose another ministerial post? Or let's say like you'll get two of these. Try to request coalition approval. See what both of them say. Participation is desired despite, despite the constitutional impossibility of you running in the national election. I must remind you that you can still campaign for our party by establishing a political agenda. Participating in meetings, this will help the candidate emerge victorious. And we do have a left-wing billionaire meeting. So we offer him a coffee, sure. offer a glass huh. of champagne, tell him he is yeah. radiant, tell him to speak yes. highly of us in public. Let's try to see if he can sell us to support us at the next I'm elections. He says no. And it's the richest and gorgeous. Then finally, let's go ahead and ask him to fund our yes. party. So he's the left wing. He's going to be funding the left wing party. So let's go ahead and go to the next day. Um, evaluation of the program. Immigration agreement with the United States has been accepted. So we're getting a boost of money off of that. Plus, we're going to start reducing some uh, illegal immigration to the United States. And then we're going to start helping out essentially with asylum seekers. Um, running tactics, um, coalition, this is a great political party, um, approved. So it looks like the entire, yep, the entire uh, coalition has been approved. Marina has accepted it, and the uh, ecologist of the Verde party has accepted it, and the PCM has accepted it. So we are now in a formal political coalition with the communists and the greens. That's not exactly the type of uh, a thing that I would like to be a part of, but we're gonna go ahead and uh, do it. So let's go ahead and congratulate the, let's go ahead and congratulate our own party, Marina, and we're gonna criticize Pan, and we're gonna criticize uh, Pre. And there is a possibility that, um, you know what? I think I'm starting to notice and national action maybe there's a possibility that i kind of got these guys flipped around maybe maybe pan could have been pre and then pre could have been pan um maybe i got that wrong i don't know uh, I, th I think i think i did it pretty well i'm, I'm seeing a lot of you guys are kind of like enjoying this so hopefully we're not just going against pre but we'll see Evaluation of the program is disappointing. We're counting on you to set different goals and targets that are more in line with our electorate. Come on, you can do it. And go over, go over to key figures, go over to unions. Let's go ahead and invite a couple of these guys over. Um, wage earners. We're going to do a federal employers union. And then we're going to do national energy union. And then Friday, we're going to do artists. Let's do the popular humorist, committed filmmaker. Let's get the filmmaker to support us. And then athletes, footballer. Let's get the footballer um, to support us. Saturday, we're going to do um, do, 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 do associations. Let's meet up with some of the associations here. Um, consumer rights, National Club for Drivers. rights. obviously doesn't like me. National Family Committee will be able to meet with us and then coordination for handicap human sharing national hunting and sharing poverty man go ahead and see what kind of a illegal employment on decline 32 percent we're gonna go ahead and try to get these guys to support us all right and we have our first poll for this election so claudia scheinbaum is in the lead with 61 percent 31% is going over to Alejandro Moreno Cardenas, or Pri. And then we have Zojito Galvez is in fourth place right now. So there's a possibility I could have actually flipped these guys around. I didn't really see the... Um, I was kind of going off of some other information. So kind of a little bit of a mistake, but it's also kind of not because um, Pri is still pretty much a strong opposition party um it's just that it kind of has been replaced by pan so pan and pre are still pretty kind of like competitive with each other i believe um so 
go ahead and see. Uh, wow, program popularity is already at 100%. That is good, 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 good. So I'm very excited to see what else we can do. Let's go ahead and do uh, a meeting in Chihuahua. Actually, let's just do it in Distrito Federal um, in $901,000. Uh, um, let's go ahead and do this on Wednesday. And this will be for a reduction in a tax. What kind of tax could we be reducing today? Or could we be increasing? Uh, tax on pornography. Um, could do a real estate tax. We could do the reduction in uh, income taxes. Or we could be promising a value-added tax reduction. Um, as consumption is going down, maybe this could actually be something that we can afford. So let's go ahead and... Let's go ahead and promise a, a reduction in the value added tax as consumption is going down. Maybe we can encourage a little bit of production or consumption. Uh, let's, go, let's go ahead and promise a reduction in that. Yep, people, the party opinion really loves it. The public really loves it. I'm pretty excited to see what we can actually do in our next term. And again, uh, very excited to see what we can do with the first woman president of Mexico. We're going to try to do a restart in Argentinian relations. We did have a free trade agreement with them. However, they are seeming to have a political crisis as of right now. What is new, honestly? Um, so unfortunately, we are not able to grow our relations yet with Argentina. However, we do have some pretty ideal relations with uh, with uh, the Federative Republic of Brazil. So um, I do want to try to uh, increase our bi bilateral relations there. Let's go ahead and try to jumpstart that by um, introducing a student exchange agreement. Um, they obviously uh, <laughs> said no to that. Um, in response, we do have a free trade agreement with them. So let's go ahead, look at that. It is a reciprocal contract. We'll go ahead and keep that. That is a pretty valuable agreement, that $128 billion right now. Tourism professionals complain. We are already subsidizing. So just keep, keep calm for right now, sir, please. National Regeneration Movement fundraising campaign has raised $9.2 million. Amazing, amazing, amazing. That is that is just a massive amount of money that we can do. I'm pretty excited to finish the energy tutorial as the uh, tutorial that will come afterward uh, will be a election tutorial. I had to conduct a poll for you guys and ask you guys whether you guys wanted a uh, uh election tutorial or whether you guys wanted a immigration tutorial so you guys do want a uh, uh election tutorial so i'll go ahead and follow up of energy with elections energy is taking such a long time mainly because of the research that was involved in it and as well as um it, my editor is kind of giving me issues right now especially with the amount of like footage that i'm putting in there um, I, what do you guys want me to have a lot of stock footage in these tutorials? Is it kind of like help you guys understand it? Is it cool to look at? Um, I do obviously want to put some gameplay in there. Um, energy is kind of like a lot of stock footage. So I'm kind of wondering whether it's even going to be a lot of you guys are going to perceive it that well because there's going to be a lot of stock footage and you're like, oh, well, where's the gameplay? I need to know where this is. This is, this is. Um, blah, 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 blah. But anyway, let's go ahead and go back to the gameplay. Um, investing in cyber protection or server protection. Total funding since uh, 1123 is $5 million. Uh, the latest installment was in March of 2024. Cyber protection lets you perform a security audit on local networks, databases, websites, messaging, and modify systems accordingly. It also includes a training module to educate personnel on cyber security. So let's go ahead and do a... Um, I was going to do two and a half million dollars. Let's go ahead and do three and a half million dollars uh, into cyber protection. Um, and then uh, we're going to do a, a in a fundraising campaign very soon. I'm going to do that at about uh, 40 days, 35 days, somewhere around there. Um, we are pretty good on campaigning and everything like that. We kind of want to do some campaigning. Uh, just down the road kind of subsequently we don't want to we kind of want to we want to keep this lead that we have right here we want to have a commanding lead right now with our coalition um, we don't we do not want to lose a lot of this 
Um, let's go ahead and look expenditures. So this is the estimated political program and campaign budgetary impact of the campaign program to annual expenditures will be raised in Mexico by $5.8 billion and an annual budgetary receipts will be, will be increased by $9.7 billion. So essentially we are doing a positive on this pair on this program. This is not the cost of the campaign, but this is rather the cost of all of the campaign promises that I have made. And therefore this is how much all of the taxes will be increased. And this is how much the expenditure of Mexico will be increased. So that is what this means right here is the annual budgetary impact of the country under these conditions that you have set under this campaign. And now right now, separate protection, we have spent eight point eight and a half million dollars. Fundraisers we have raised, we have spent about one point one six million dollars and INS polling has costed uh, INS polling has cost about four hundred thirty thousand dollars we have spent nine hundred two dollars nine hundred two thousand dollars on campaign rallies we have held one rally and the party budget right now is 20 point uh 20.41 million dollars so a pretty successful election campaign right now i'm very excited to see how much we win by all right we're gonna meet with three left-wing parties right now we are going to meet with the PRD or the Party of the Democratic Revolution. And we're gonna go ahead and meet with them. And we are successful in getting all of these guys to drop out of the election and getting them to support us. So very, very exciting to see that that is exactly what is what is happening right now. Xochitl Gavez is only getting 4.9% of the vote right now. Free is getting about 35%. And it looks like that we are now up about 64% of the vote right now. It's going to be a two-way race. We just want to make sure that we are going to keep him below. We're going to make sure that we keep him below 40%, 45% at the least. And then maybe, 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 if I need to, we will actually support Zojatel Galvez and try to say, hey, your party is actually pretty cool, and then maybe try to split off the vote a little bit. Checking on the coalition, we are doing pretty good, and it looks like that inflation is ticking up just a tiny bit as soon as we're done with this election. We're gonna go ahead and do some, uh, uh, we're gonna actually we're gonna reduce we're gonna introduce a tax reform and then this tax reform will lower VAT the VAT tax to 15%. However, we're going to respond in kind by increasing the industrial pollution tax and as well as I believe this will also be uh, maybe the highway toll tax or uh, the petroleum tax. So um, we're gonna fight consumption we're going to fight the increased amount of credit um with some uh extra like growth fighting taxes legislative elections has been held andre andres manuel lopez obrador's party is the winner i would like to say thank you um to all those who renewed their trust in me and i'll strive to prove myself worthy of such an honor once again the voters indeed voted in favor of the president's with president's party with 207 seats at the National Assembly, which implies a comfortable majority for our party. So we see 207 seats, 41% goes over to Marina and 30% goes over to Industrial uh, Institutional Revolutionary Party. National Action Party got decimated in this election. Um, and citizens movements. Uh, I think that's ac this actually like could be the last election. Um, hang on, let's go ahead and look. Uh, 207 seats. Yeah, yeah, that's 207. That's pretty accurate. Um, so pretty good majority, and we have a lot of left wing. Obviously, we have a lot of left wing, way more than a majority right now, um, to pass left wing policies in order to advance our agenda. So that's good, 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 good and lack of spaces in secondary school system. We're gonna do a lot of work. It's a lot of work to do in this next term as Claudia Scheinbaum. But anyway, we do see that we have discovered some military technology, so this is good, that we can start to upgrade our, our weapons. So we're gonna do some subsidies um, in the next episode. Crime falling, but still high. However, it is still high level and means one of the major concerns of our citizens. Uh, what is our crime level compared to the world right now? 27.37%. That is still so high. We're even higher than, we're lower than El Salvador and Honduras, but we are higher right now than Guatemala. 
So that is a telling sign that we need to still continue to fight. Uh, uh, we need to, con to continue to fight uh, homicide rates and crime rates right now. So that is a huge concern right now. Um, another thing that we're going to promise, um, since we're kind of getting a little bit closer to the election, um, stock for surveillance cameras. Could we? No. Um, we're going to do... We're going to do 1.2 million police officers. We're going to promise. And we're going to do this in Mexico. Mexico province. Friday. Uh, the party somewhere in the Texas early this morning. Come on. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? We've been funding our... We've been funding it. We've been funding cyber protection. Why are we not getting that much? We need to have like 20 million. That's another thing that you need to invest in. Obviously, this is a huge, huge, horrible uh, thing that has happened. We don't have that much of uh, scandals right now, but it's usually like rumors that end up happening. Only $7 million. Are you kidding me? A travesty occurring right now that is just stupid. I don't know why we're getting so vulnerable to cyber attacks. I've even been doing a lot of uh, investments and making sure that the citizens are aware of it. This is obviously not a national cyber attack, but this is still a cyber attack nonetheless. $49.8 billion right now. Let's go ahead and go over to debt. Let's go over to the United States and let's pay off the United States just a tiny bit. Um, go ahead and say, hey, just leave us alone a little bit. 3.5% um, Good evening. The highly anticipated debate will begin in a few moments' time. We have also set up a new instant polling system to gauge viewers' reactions to the candidates' arguments and, in some ways, define the winner of the debate. Let's get to the first part of the program, underway now. The candidates will take it in turns to comment on various issues of importance to our fellow citizens. So, God, that is so funny. What's your opinion on I, the matter? I like this. I really like. I really like the little pictures right there. Um, so this is a discussion about um, environments. Go over here. Wildlife protection, regulation on hunting, animal welfare. Let's go ahead and do a recognition of animal rights. Environmental conservation, the transition towards a green economy, energy change. Go ahead and skip Thank that. You. And moving on, what would you like to say about this? And he wants to reduce funding to combat uh, the combat of animal droppings. In these difficult times, it is essential. Bro's literally justifying. Thank you. Well, let's move on to a. So, what's your opinion on the matter? And establish the eight for purchase of property. Damn. Damn you, dude. Come on. Come on, why are you taking my ideas? Need I remind okay, you I that no the like right it. to housing is a fundamental right. And I like how a right-wing party is saying that Very housing well. is a human right. Coming over to you, where do you stand on this? Anything you want to add? Yes, I do, sir. Let's go ahead and go over to legislation. Do some regulation of rent increases. Or we're going to do a monthly rent allowance. Go ahead and promise... About $25 to citizens of Mexico. In these times of economic downturn and growing poverty, it is absolutely essential we act in the spirit of national solidarity with the most disadvantaged of our society in mind. It is a question of collective conscience and unnegotiable. Thank you. It's now time for the second part of the program, where the candidates will be able to ask each other questions directly. Well, I would like some clarification on this matter, Build which a you bandied about, in my opinion, throughout the campaign. Bro, bro, bro really wants wants to know like what I'm gonna do. Um, university support sport. Let's go ahead and uh, promise some more funding the university sports. Sport is education. It epitomizes solidarity, teamwork, and effort. 
All right, and let's go ahead and hit him with the immigration argument. I would like argument. to hear you talk about this subject, as I feel you've been quite vague as to where you stand. It is an objective reality and makes sense. We cannot welcome all the world's poverty. Under my authority, the state will take its responsibilities and commit to limiting immigration by taking courageous measures. Thank you. We are now coming to the end of the debate. I would like to ask both candidates to wrap up now and perhaps share one final promise with us. Income exoneration for private retirement schemes. Um, that was going to cost about eight point six point eight billion dollars. Life expectancy is Ow. increasing. Society is evolving, and our senior citizens are naturally increasingly job seekers. The state must respond to these expectations and ensure a decent life to its elders. I will enforce that it does not miss its obligations. So a huge disaster for the institutional revolutionary party, a huge disaster in this election. They were not able to just com compete with the Marina party, with the coalition. They were not able to perform well at all in this debate. What really sealed the deal for them is them trying to reverse the open door policy that we have enacted. We will not call it an open door policy. Um, that almost almost political suicide right there, wasn't it? But uh, we they they are we tried to reverse or tried to promise that they were going to reverse the um, the open immigration policy that we had um, that we enacted as uh, AMLO and just a massive massive defeat for the pre party. It's just a, just a embarrassment, an embarrassment, probably going to be one of the most lopsided Mexican elections in recent history in modern history. At this point, let's go over to justice, try to see, determine the balance of power already pretty good right here. Determine the level, the severity of punishments. Could we promise that severity of punishments could go up? Let's go over to tax exemptions for companies using retirement by capitalization. Um, let's go ahead. And Life expectancy that. is increasing. Society is evolving and an increasing number of job seekers are senior citizens. The state must meet these demands so our elders can live a decent life. I will do my utmost to ensure the state meets its obligations. Thank you once again to both of you for the clean and fair debate. And to all our valued viewers, I hope this has helped you gain a greater perspective on our candidates. Good evening. Our instant polling system has designated a winner. Good evening. I like how I said good evening twice. A massive defeat, a massive defeat for uh, the pre-party for any Mexican opposition at this point. We are going to be... Uh, soaring, soaring Miss uh, Miss Claudia Scheinbaum into the presidential palace. This is a absolute certainty that we are going to be uh, continuing this series right now. Result of the TV, TV debate, Claudia Scheinbaum conquered the public with nearly 100% of the viewers finding, finding your participation more convincing than Alejandro Moreno Chris Cardenas. Cardenas, cheers, Mr. President. So good, 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 good. Cannot wait to see what the presidential election results are. Um, remind you that blah, 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 blah. So face to face evaluation of the program your campaign agenda is excellent. Let's go ahead and see what the, what this next election is. We have all of our 92.7 million voters are on their way to the polls as of right now. We'll have the results the day after tomorrow. So on January 8th or July 8th, um, principal partners being made public. Remember coming on the heels of a uh, from cyber attack. Uh, no popularity hit as of right now, so we, we seem to be good. So let's go ahead and go to Monday and see what the results are. Good evening. The majority of votes have been counted. Take a look at this. All right, and it is already a massive victory for the Marina Party. Hugo Eric Flores, only 4.5%. Zochitel Galvez, 7.8%. Uh, 
uh, Alejandro Marino, 22.39%. Claudia Scheinbaum, the Marina Party, 65.23%. A massive victory for Marina. Head of state at their campaign headquarters. It is with emotion and gratitude that I thank those who have renewed their confidence in me. I know I will prove worthy of their confidence without dismissing those who did not vote for me because it is a united people that I want to govern in order to foster a mighty nation. I love these little stupid animations. Um, historical results right now, 39, 33, five and two. Let's go over 46, wow, 46% turnout. A huge, 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 that is that is just decimating. No wonder we kinda, no wonder it was kinda lopsided a little bit. No one turned out for this election. Half of the country did not care about this election. All right, and we have it right here. The game is over for you, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador. But since your political party won the elections, you have the chance to continue playing with the new head of state. You want to continue the game with Claudia Scheinbaum? Let's go ahead and accept this uh, challenge right here, and we will gonna, we'll be able to go ahead and continue the series. So it looks like that Miss Claudia Scheinbaum is now our brand new president, the first. Uh, president, the first woman president of Mexico, a huge accomplishment for women in the United Mexican States. All right, and so we have government to be created. Let's go ahead and tell him to create a new government. So we'll leave that to him. Okay, so a little bit of a mistake here that we kind of kind of made. Um, it looks like that I may have taken a little bit too long to form the governments and what happened is that the coalition collapsed. This is a not that much of an issue, honestly, as this government that we have, the, 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 the government type that we have in Mexico is a presidential system. The only time that it would matter is if we were a parliamentary system. That means that if we were a parliamentary system, we would have the total collapse of the government. We would have to run through elections again as we are a presidential system. And we only had to vote on, we had to have, have to worry about the popular vote of the people themselves. We don't have to worry about who the, what the parliament looks like in order to run the governments mostly. So it seems that the, uh, the coalition has collapsed, but, uh, the coalition has collapsed, but this will not really affect us. We're not really going to have a much of an effect on anything right now. So we're actually pretty good right now. And we don't have to worry about making them happy or even suffering any sort of loss of the coalition. Let's go ahead and try to get back up to speed with our uh, with our uh, approval rating right now. Let's go ahead and increase our subsidies to agriculture to $500 million. And then this will give us a massive boost in a popularity. 90% that is automatically amazing. Um, so let's go over to creation of an ambitious space program. Um, and then irrevocable resignation um governments what what did what did i do what did i what did i do my my government is just resigning right now it's a little bit of a political uh i, I wouldn't say political crisis but uh we are having a lot of people resigning from our government right now for some reason and i'm not really familiar as to why they are resigning um it's probably because of the coalition i'm trying to figure out what's going on let's go ahead and congratulate some of these guys with really low approval all right and we are good for now um this is this is a pretty long episode i'm pretty sure this episode is probably maybe going to be around an hour maybe just less than an hour um a huge episode lots of different wheels kind of turning in this um very interesting stuff that happened a very dramatic election dramatic after the election a very small turnout very small turnout only like about 40 percent and i'm pretty pretty kind of like curious as to why there was such low turnout in this election 
Um, and then after the election, the coalition fell apart. And then we had a bunch of resignations in our government, their newly formed government. A lot of instability that just happened, but we seem to have made it through it. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and start focusing on infrastructure projects. We're going to try to concentrate on building a port. And then we are going to start increasing and maintaining some bilateral relations and trying to fight inflation. Now. We have a lot of uh, economic growth that we are starting to deal with. So we need to start trying to control that economic growth through taxes, including the industrial pollution tax, and as well as maybe even a couple of gas taxes. And then trying to kind of start to focus on revitalizing the Mexican economy, things like increasing our reliance on manufacturing bringing manufacturing back to mexico making mexico the manufacturing hub of the americas and also increasing bilateral relations both economically and militarily with the united states and as well as south south and central america next episode is going to be pretty big and before we go i want to go ahead and check my immigration rate real quick it looks like that we did have a little bit of a moderation with a moderate uh kind of like flatline with illegal immigrants in mexico but during the election period it does seem that we did have an increase in the amount of illegal immigrants coming into mexico so we're going to go ahead and try to start maybe trying to control that it that situation right there we also need to try to get net immigration to go to positive that is really what i want to try to focus on as well um and then also trying to stop people from coming in we still have a wall under construction right now so we're waiting for that to complete and as and then uh, we don't really need to change any laws right now so we're kind of good but we can also do a regularization operation but we still don't have 500,000 people it's not you don't specifically need 500,000 it's just that that's the number I kind of want to look for but anyway guys go ahead and leave a like subscribe to the channel if you are new if you guys want to see more content like this hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss anything whenever i do make it to the channel i do really enjoy the series i really uh hope you guys are liking it right now if you guys didn't have any suggestions go ahead and let me know i know some of you are like hey you should do like a monarchy or something like that we're not really going for a monarchy right now we're not gonna do the little funny that france did back in the back during the american civil war you know installing um a austrian into the uh, into the throne of mexico for some reason but guys go ahead and leave a like subscribe to the channel if you are new and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you guys so much for watching this with me and take care